And so, Lord, we just thank you for Corey, God, that uh, he's with us today. And, uh, we just pray your inspiration is on him today. And, uh, just everything in the spirit to be uh, released, Lord, that he would release it today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning, Hot Hoppers. Can I call you Hot Hoppers? Is that legal? It's legal. Hot Hoppers. Yes, I want to thank David and Bethany for having me out. So I'm, we're excited to be here. So my family, Meredith, my wife, right there, Samantha, my daughter, our new son, Gabriel, who has been raptured. And then uh, we have a 10-year-old, Justice, who is playing with the kids next door. So we are really thankful to be with you guys today. And as David had said, we, the Lord, you know, he graciously allowed us to um, found a ministry called Ignite the Nations. And so our, our mission with Ignite is really to exalt Jesus. How many of you think that's a good mission? So we like to exalt Jesus. We, of course, want to awaken the lost. We want to equip the church. And when we think about equipping the church, we're primarily talking about encountering God because it's really all about having a relationship with Him. So we're focused on that. And it's been quite a journey. How many of you would say that your journey with the Lord has been characterized by surprise? Yeah. But I wouldn't trade it for anything, right? I mean, it's it's been an adventure. Gabriel, has it been an adventure? Has it been a surprise? Yeah. Yes, it has. So it's pretty exciting. 2001, we founded a house of prayer up in northern Indiana. And uh, the Lord miraculously gathered a little group, you know, just like this. And uh, we started in a garage, not a barn, but we started in a garage. And it grew to a, a little community of about 300 people where we were going day and night in prayer for about six, seven years. That house of prayer is still going up there. And then the Lord moved us in 2007 to the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, where we um, he opened up doors for me to lead their internships and training programs. And it was just amazing. The nation's coming in, training and equipping them. And then he opened up doors for us to travel throughout the nations. We've been to six continents, um, haven't been to Antarctica, and don't really care to go. But um, we've been everywhere else helping to strengthen and establish the praying church which has been really exciting. And then last um, 2018 or so, the Lord, you know, kind of wanted to shift gears with us and he told us to follow him into the nations. And so we're like, what does that mean? And so he moves us to the YWAM mission space in uh, Hawaii. So we were there for three years. And then last year brought us here to do a sacred assembly. How many of you were part of that sacred assembly? You were there, you were there, you were there. Yeah, so we were here for 30 days, we thought, and then we were ready to go back to Hawaii. And the Lord said, no, you get to stay. And we're like, all right, we get to stay. So we moved here, so here we are. We're about a mile away, and we found out about the glory barn and the trauma llamas, and you know, we want to be here. So it's been a lot of fun. So thanks for having us today, and um, I'm going to do a two-part series. Uh, actually, what's coming up is I, I've taught the book of Revelation for the, since I got saved, 25 years plus. And I'm going to do a new series on it that's going to take probably about a year to go through it all. Um, but uh, kind of to, to stoke the fire prior to that, I thought, you know, the two weekends that I get to come here, let's just dive into the revelation of Jesus, right? It doesn't get any better than that. So this weekend we're going to do kind of a part one and two weeks from now we'll do kind of a part two. And I'm just going to hit like some of the mountaintop revelation of Jesus in the book. We're going to look at Revelation 1 today mostly and then next uh, time I come in the 31st we're going to go into the second coming of Jesus and the glorious millennial reign of Christ on the earth, So, which is our great hope, right? So, Father, we just thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your plans. Father, you're so good to us. You love us. You're tender with our weakness. You meet us where we're at, and you're here. And so thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, would you open our eyes up today to behold the beauty of Jesus? Give us a revelation of who he is, that we would leave transformed and changed I'm asking to open up our ears today to hear what the Spirit is saying to us and give me a mouth to speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, 
So clearly, the book of Revelation, how many of you feel like, I've got it? Okay, I'm in the right spot then. I mean, it, it is one of the most controversial books, right, in the whole Bible, probably other than Song of Solomon. That would be, I would think, number two. Um, and the enemy's done a lot to, he's put a lot of effort into trying to confuse the book, complicate the book, get the church to fear what they think the book might say if they ever read it, right? So why study the book of Revelation? Why dig in? Well, I want to, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there's, we could be here all day just on this point. But there's three primary reasons that I want to highlight today that I think are really relevant for us. And I've broken them down to internal reasons, external reasons, and eternal reasons. So we want to look at that. And I'm going to kind of skim through the notes. I'm not going to read them word for word, but I want to empower you with notes because leaving here today I want to empower you to begin to dig into the book if you haven't done it yet because I believe that God made the book of Revelation for everyone to understand it he didn't put it in the Bible to confuse us he put it there to empower us to be victorious specifically in the day of the Lord which we are fast approaching in fact I believe wholeheartedly because of the signs of the times that are all around us right now we are in the end times. So I want to I want to give you permission to believe that and I want to give you permission to begin to prepare for that and not think that it's 50 years, 100 years away, but we're in the end times right now and the church would do well to begin to live according to that. And burn the American dream because Jesus has a better dream. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. Jesus has a better dream for us than the American dream. And it's called eternal partnership with God. Like we're, we're invited into being a part of the Godhead forever. To be with him where he's at. You know, Jesus prayer in John 17, Father, I pray that they would behold my glory. Yes. Okay, that wasn't just for the day you die. That's for right now. His prayer for you is that you would be able to behold his glory right now. And so it doesn't take much. I mean, a little glimpse of his glory can change your life forever. How many of you believe that? It only takes one encounter with God to change everything. I mean, that's how we got saved, isn't it? That was a pretty radical transformation. I mean, going from life to death. I mean, death to life immediately. So we want to look at internal reasons. Paragraph A there. Now, the book of Revelation, it was given initially in a time of great trial to strengthen the people of God. And two things that the Lord was looking to strengthen in the people of God when he first gave it was number one, to overcome the challenges that they were facing in their day. How many of you would like some strength and some grace to overcome the challenges that you're facing today? Do we have challenges today? Yeah. Come on. Well, God wants to give you grace to overcome it. And and let's change our definition of grace because a lot of us assume grace would just mean, you know, the unmerited favor of God. And certainly that's that's part of grace. But a, a much better definition, if you dig into the Greek word, is the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in your life. So when God speaks of giving grace or here in Revelation 1 verse 4, when it says grace and peace to you, grace to you. He's not saying unmerited favor to you. He's saying in a time of great trial, when the people of God are going through great persecution, strength to your heart so that you can overcome. He's looking for overcomers. And not only just to overcome the challenges, but he says peace to you, the shalom of God to you, that you would have confident assurance in a time of trial that God is still on the throne and he is leading history to his desired end. You hear me? It may look different if you turn on the news. So you'd be smart to shut it off. <laughs> but God is still on the throne and he's leading human history to his desired end. How I many of you know he's got a glorious end for us? And really, it's not even an end. It's a glorious new beginning for us. You know, it says in Psalm chapter 2, I love the psalm, Psalm 2, that the nations are raging. The kings of the earth are setting themselves. They're taking counsel against the Lord, against his purpose, against his people. 
But what does it say in verse 4? That the Lord sits in the heavens and he is just so stressed out beyond belief he doesn't know what to do. What does he do? He sits in the heavens. Relax. He's, he's resting. He, he's unmoved. At the flood, he sat enthroned, right? He sits in the heavens and he laughs. Why? Because his plan is to set his king on holy Mount Zion. That means Jesus is coming again. He's going to set up his Davidic throne in the city of Jerusalem. He's going to restore the entire earth. And he's going to do it in partnership with the people he loves best. Who's that? That's Hot Hoppers. And he's going to restore the entire earth back to the Garden of Eden condition so we can dwell in unhindered face-to-face -face communion with our Father forever. Amen. I mean, guys, this is a glorious plan. Nothing's going to change that plan. Nobody can change it. So though the nations gather in resistance against the Lord, even today, there's never been a time in human history where... The majority of the leaders of the nations are in defiant resistance against God's word and his ways. Never before in human history have we seen what we're seeing right now. I mean, it's been going on behind the scenes for decades, but right now it's becoming manifest. And we're shocked. We're surprised. And part of the church is wondering, Lord, are you still in control? Well, the Lord wants to impart grace, which is strength, and he wants to impart peace, so that we have confident assurance that he is still leading history to his desired end and nothing is going to stop it. And he's written it down for us ahead of time. So this is where we need to spend the majority of our time. Shut off the news and get tomorrow's news today. Right? Because this is the news. This is the truth. 99.999% of everything you see through the media is not truth. This is true. Okay. So, paragraph B. So, that's internal reasons. So, it's important that we're strengthened internally because Jesus talked about some of the greatest internal threats to the church in the end times were going to be things like offense, lust, fear is a great, huge threat to the church at the end of the age to the point that men's hearts would be failing for fear, says Luke 21. And this is how we combat those things by being internally strengthened. Another one in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, it talks about the spirit of the Antichrist and yea, even the man, the Antichrist at the end of the age, wearing the saints down through continual mental harassment, right? And you can feel that bombarding us right through the witchcraft coming through the airwaves right now. I mean, the prince of the power of the air, he's still active. And it's just that constant pressure wearing the saints down mentally. We need internal strength to be able to... Up, be upheld through that and not just endure it. But guys, God's got a plan that we would prevail through what's happening. Not just endure, prevail. So it's important that we're internally strengthened. Okay, that's number one. Number two, external. So the revelation of Jesus Christ was given to prepare God's people, paragraph B, to partner with him in transitioning this age into the age to come, called the millennium, by releasing unified, faith-filled words of agreement, okay? So it's great that we pray personally right now. That's a huge part of your prayer life, devotional prayer. It's great when we gather corporately, you know, in small gatherings and we pray. But the Lord is orchestrating a worldwide prayer movement where all the saints on the earth at the end of the age, and it's getting more and more this way as we approach the end of the age, all the saints on the earth We'll be praying unified. I'm going to throw in kind of a big word, eschatological. It just means the shifting of this age into the millennium. Unified eschatological prayers of faith. And we're going to be praying them all at the same time. In unity. Never before in human history has the prayer movement been unified. But we're going to be unified around God's plan which is written in the book of Revelation. And that's why it's important we understand the plan so that we are partnering with him to shift history. And not only will it be the saints worldwide 